Hello, I'm Brian Coble, Director of High Performance Homes for Advanced Energy. Advanced Energy is working to ensure every building is healthy, safe, comfortable, durable, energy efficient, and environmentally responsible. I'm kicking off our three-part series on how to properly install bad insulation to ResNet Grade 1 installation requirements. We're in a neighborhood of Energy Star Homes, and we've selected a home under construction to follow the insulation crew through the insulation installation process. First, we'll walk through the home and take note of all the areas that need to be insulated and what needs to be done in advance of the insulation going in. There are many places in a home that require insulation to meet specific energy efficiency criteria and many of these can be missed if they're not noted beforehand. Then we'll watch as professional insulation contracting crew insulates the home to grade one requirements. I think you'll be impressed by some of the techniques they use to make sure all the nooks and crannies are addressed. And then finally, we'll walk back through the home after the insulation has been installed and see if it meets the criteria and passes inspection. Along the way, we'll cover some of the framing details, tools, and safety recommendations that I think you may find useful. So come with me as we see what it takes for a grade one insulation job. In part one, I'm going to walk through this home, look for the framing uh, to ensure that it's in place and ready for our insulation. The first thing I notice as I walk into the home that come onto the front porch is that the framer has extended the exterior sheathing from the first floor continuously to the second floor. So this porch roof is separated from the floor system inside. Now I'm going to go inside and see what I find. So as I walk into this home, I like to work my way around to the right, and one of the first things I come to is this bay window. And this is an important detail because above the bay, uh, there is a small attic space that's inaccessible when this home's complete. So it'll be really important that our insulation contractor pays attention to this small space and insulates it before drywall's installed. So just to the right of the bay window, we have another spot where we have a few details here. Uh, we have a band. We'll be taking a look at this band as we walk through the first floor. And the band is a part of the floor system that separates the first floor from the second floor. And we want to make sure that there are no penetrations moving through the band. We have a small crack in the band here, or seam, uh, that we'll want to ensure is air sealed before insulation is placed um, so that we can see it and we can access it. Um, here we have a two stud corner, which is a great framing practice. Instead of uh, building this corner solid with studs, we have two studs so that insulation can fully fill this cavity and we don't end up with an empty space without insulation. Um, we also have a window. And the window has a, a small crack between the window and the rough framing. Uh, this crack can be filled with multiple appropriate products um, small cracks, you may want to use caulk. Uh, larger cracks like this, a minimal expanding foam works really well. If it's a really large crack, you may want to backfill it with insulation and then seal over the top with an air barrier. The important piece about this crack is ensuring that you have an air barrier in place to stop airflow around the window. So now we're here at the fireplace insert and the important detail here is ensuring that we've insulated and backed behind this fireplace to bring this cavity inside the conditioned space. So we have insulation and a rigid backing that can stop air, an air barrier here. And this air barrier can be OSB, gypsum board, any rigid material that stops airflow. And we just have to ensure we insulate before it's installed. And you can also see that it's been air sealed well. Um, above this, this is similar to the bay window that we talked about earlier. Um, we have a miniature attic space. We have to ensure that this is insulated before drywall is installed. So here I'm in the kitchen nook, and one of the things we really want to avoid when installing insulation is wind intrusion. Um, wind or air that moves through the insulation um, reduces the R value of the insulation. So here you can see um, at the top above this window, we have a vented soffit on the outside, and to protect the insulation from the air that's coming in through that soffit, there's OSB from the sheathing that's running up, and there's also, there are also baffles in place that the insulation installers pre-install. 
So this ensures that air goes into the vented soffit, up and over the edge of the insulation instead of passing through it. So as I mentioned early on, as we walk through this home, we're going to continue to take a look at the band system, which makes up the second floor system and separates the first floor from the second. In this case, I'm in a bathroom. We have a penetration going through that band. And the penetration is the bath's uh, kitchen or the bath exhaust. And before insulation is installed, we want to ensure that we have the, an appropriate material sealing this penetration before the insulation goes in. And then this plumbing vent stack, we want to ensure, if possible, we can have insulation placed behind that vent stack as well as in front of it so that we reach the full R value of the insulation. So we're still in the first floor bathroom and we have an interesting detail where in the corner of this home we have an exterior closet that will be unconditioned. This wall will be insulated and above this wall the second story floor system continues over it, essentially a cantilever as a cantilever. Uh, the insulation installer will fill this cavity with insulation and then come back and cap the end with an air barrier. Any rigid material that can stop air also seal it to create a six-sided assembly for that insulation and ensure air outside of the building can't make it into this floor system. So above my head we have an ICAT or insulation contact airtight recessed can. This fixture allows us to insulate over the recessed can instead of boxing around it and leaving a void in our attic insulation. It also ensures that the connection is airtight. We're not losing house air to the attic or bringing attic air into the home. It's important to remember this Energy Star home is being built to the latest energy code standard. That means that care and attention are paid to those things that increase the energy efficiency of the home. The insulation contractor plays an important role in meeting the energy code requirements and needs to make sure that the exterior sheathing of the air barrier extends from the first floor to the second floor, inaccessible spaces are air sealed prior to installing insulation, band joists are air sealed, and care is taken to ensure that insulation is installed properly in small and irregular cavities. Baffling is in place at the vented soffits. Cantilevers and similar framing are insulated and capped, and that eye cats and can lights are completely insulated top and sides. In addition to this presentation, NEMA and its members have a host of how-to resources that are available online free of charge. That completes our pre-insulation walkthrough. Now we'll follow the professional insulators. They're quick, exacting, and thorough, and I think you'll be impressed.